Hey guys, this is Rodney. Uh, in this video, we're going to be uh, installing uh, Freescale Code Warrior 6.3 Classic. Uh, we're going to be installing the Peony Micro programming tools, and we're going to be um, setting up and programming one of the older uh, devices, which in this case is a USB ML12, specifically the Revision uh, C. Here we have a board that has some, um, this one has two 8-bit processors, but we're going to program the uh, HCS08 SH series here, and uh, we're going to program both of those with these, and um, we're going to do it under uh, Windows uh, 10 64-bit. Uh, you can see that I've updated to the latest build as of recording, which is uh, 5111, which came out a couple weeks ago. And let's get started. So th these are based on uh, instructions from the forum. So we're going to start out by go ahead and, and extracting the installer. And in order to uh, extract the installer, you're going to need to have a 7-zip installed. And you can see I picked the... Uh, 7-zip uh, fold down menu extract. So also you have a couple files that we've downloaded from the forums. Um, we have uh, some stuff we're going to need for the uh, programmer. We have this remove operating system check VBS file and we also have um, the updates associated with uh, Code Warrior 6.3 Classic. And um, you can take a look at this VBS file in case you're curious what's in it. Basically it, it opens up an MSI and removes any checks that say, oh, if this is a 64-bit operating system, fail, or if this is a version um, that it thinks is incompatible. The specific error message you get is something about Windows XP 64-bit. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move this file into the folder. We're going to open this up, and we're going to drop the MSI file on top of the VBS file, just like this. If you do it right, you should get four error messages. Uh, four, not error messages, info messages like this. So now we're actually going to be ready to install this guy. So let's now go ahead and run setup.exe. And setup.exe is basically going to open this MSI file up, but we're going to run it from setup here. Okay. Now you can use these same instructions for Windows 8 and earlier versions of Windows 10 if you happen to have them installed. Uh, the trick is um, with some earlier versions uh, of Windows, uh, you do need to do a custom install. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do this here just because it's a good idea. Uh, you don't need to install the uh, soft tech or the iSpace. These are obsolete. Um, they, these were never updated to be 64-bit drivers. There's no point to install them. Um, the p and &E driver, uh, the one that it's going to install, it is obviously old and obsolete, but we can keep it here because it's actually not going to be able to uh, fully install its drivers, but it is going to add some files to the Freescale folder that we need. So we're going to keep that here. And this OSBDM uh, JM60, this, uh, you probably won't be using this for an OSBDM, but this is a sort of a stub that if you buy a USBDM, uh, you'll want this installed. So you can keep these two. I'm going to keep everything else um, on. And we're going to go through here. Now I should mention that the 16-bit processor that I was discussing earlier uh, you'll actually need a different version of Code Warrior with that. Um, that would be Code Warrior Classic uh, 5.1 or 5.2, depending on which one um, you want to use. The um, 5.2 was uh, released 
uh, recently, and that would probably be your uh, best shot for uh, Windows 10. Uh, although, unfortunately, some derivatives were removed from 5.2 for um, reasons that are not entirely clear. Uh, for those people who need to stick with uh, 5.1, which uh, can be made to work on Windows 7 64-bit just fine, I only bring that up because uh, it's been recent discussion and uh, initially 5.2 wasn't compatible with USB-DM but it's compatible with USB-DM now. And of course that's for 16-bit stuff. This video will be mostly concentrating um, for this clip on the 8-bit um, stuff. Now, when this installer is done, we're not going to run the Freescale Updater because the uh, Freescale Updater uh, only really registers two updates available and um, there's actually more uh, updates available. Uh, in the forum, I list a complete uh, list of them. Uh, if you want to register for a Freescale login, you can go in under their licensing page and you can access a complete list of updates. In fact, that's the next step we're going to be doing here. This is just about finished. Okay, you can see it just did a test launch of uh, Code Warrior in the background there. Um, you know, this isn't a bad oper this isn't a bad time to install your license either. Uh, in the um, Freescale forum, I've gone ahead and uh, posted a link to a license that uh, that uh, Freescale posted, which uh, is good up to uh, 64 uh, kilobyte code and doesn't expire, which is nice. And if you clone it with labs, it, it's not uh, node locked. Um, like my license would be after installing it just now. So I'm not going to go ahead and do this update, like I said, because uh, the update servers only give you two updates, and there's a lot more than that out there, two or three updates. So um, this license file is one that um, is posted in the Freescale forum. Uh, it's from uh, Freescale. It's on their website. And you can see it's open to any host ID, which is great, and um, doesn't expire. So... Let's go ahead and, and if you have your own license, for example, if you need, um, you know, more than 64 kilobits of code or some of the other uh, features that you can only get, um, you can install your license at this point. So this is a 32-bit program, so we'll find it under x64, I'm sorry, uh, x86, and we'll go ahead and go under here, and we'll drop in uh, license.dat, overwriting this file. And we will replace. Now, at this point, you will need to run uh, Code Warrior at least once as administrator uh, because you've um, changed the uh, you've changed the permissions on the file as copying it. So run this once as administrator, and now you'll be able to run it as any user. But we've gone ahead and loaded that up. So let's check. Right, everything looks good. Okay, so we've went ahead and installed our license file. Uh, we went ahead and launched as administrator. So now is a good opportunity to do updates. Uh, you could really do these in any warning, although you'll get some error messages if you try to install the processor expert update before. Um, I like to install the derivative updates, um, do the process, uh, processor expert, and then you can also do the um, 6.3.1 update. This is mainly fixes some things with the compiler. Um, it doesn't add any derivatives, so let's go ahead and fly through these real quick. This is fun.
You can see some of these updates include files not just for your wizards, uh, but they also include um, um, files related to the peony. Go ahead, the uh, peony programmer, and uh, those we won't need anyway because we're going to go ahead and use the all the peony derivative updates um, that I posted. Uh, in the forum that includes the uh, peony fixes for later operating system and also code uh, coldfire v1 uh, some fixes that have to be done to the INI file so we'll handle all of those sort of in one shot And you know, really, if you were never going to use these derivatives, you wouldn't have to do these updates. But if you're setting this up for a lab, uh, you really want to have um, all the derivative updates uh, installed. So in case people want to use some of these uh, derivatives, they don't have to bug you. All right, now we're going to install the processor expert. This guy's the largest update. Now you saw some warnings when we installed these other ones that say, hey, you know, you won't be able to use these updates until you install the processor expert. If you try to install processor expert first, it'll say, hey, you can't use these uh, derivatives until you install the derivative updates. So there's really no way to avoid messages, um, you, but uh, you can install them pretty much in any order. But if you install the processor expert last, you shouldn't get any warnings about uh, missing derivatives. Then the uh, last one we'll do is the uh, update to the Code Warrior, which brings it up to 6.3.1. Um, like I said, mainly includes compiler updates for that one. While this is running, sorry I don't have the camera on right now, but I'm going to go ahead and power this board, the 8 bit one, with uh, the voltage to power the whole board up. And when we're ready to do the PME thing, we'll be all ready to go. Sorry for the noise. Like I said, this processor expert's the biggest update. You can see it's 245 megabytes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this update window now. Even though I still have one more to run. Darn it. <laughs> Get back to that one. My old videos have cut out all this installing, but... Uh, It might go faster on your computer, especially if you have an SSD. Good thing is this last update will be pretty quick. Alrighty. Fun, fun, fun. Alright, and last but not least for the updates is this guy. 6.3.1 patch. Alright. Using a Nullsoft installer, which is nice. Used to be called that. Alright, we'll skip the release notes, what do you guys say? Okay, so 
Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and start our Code Warrior. Um, seems to be working. I'm going to kill the tips, if you don't mind. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and install the um, Peony Micro Drivers. Now, I've downloaded 12.3. Um, now, the, the version's not normally in the file name, but I like to add it in when I download it so I know which one I have. But if you hover over it, it does give the version number and the tooltip. Okay, we'll trust him. <laughs> All right, installation completed. Now it's safe to go ahead and uh, plug in your uh, Peony Micro. So um, I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in. Alright, 